Hey everyone, welcome to Co-Parenting with a Narcissist. These are some bite-sized pieces of advice to help you with your day-to-day co-parenting relationship. I'm Sarah Squires, founder of The Nurturing Coach, and I'm joined by Una Archer, founder of Parenting After Separation. And we are going to answer some of our audience's questions. And today the question is, how do I put boundaries in place when my ex has none? So that the kids, so the kids don't think that I'm being unfair or cruel by not letting them get away with the same stuff. And this is something that comes up a lot for parents, but it's really important to remember that boundaries help children to feel safe. But we understand how hard that can be to implement them, especially when they go running back to your ex, who reinforces this idea that you're being cruel and abusive in some way. But it's also important to know that by not setting them, you're almost giving them permission to overrun you. So, Una, how do we balance this? How do we ensure that we are putting these safety and secure processes in place whilst recognising the child's feelings about this? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Sarah. And, you know, I love your introduction because it is a juggling, not a juggling act, a balancing act. Um, to finding that middle ground of setting boundaries in that kind and firm way with our children. So could you give me an example of some of the day-to-day boundaries that parents might find themselves needing to set? Yeah, some of the ones that come up um, with um, our clients are, for example, um, allowing a child to play a computer game that is older than they should be um going to bed much later than um is part of the routine or is, is healthy for them um speaking badly the child speaking badly to the parent how do that how do they handle that so they're some of the really common ones that seem to come up quite mm-hmm. often or variants of those yeah yeah and i can understand how sort of changing that in your own home can really elicit a reaction from the child and how how uncomfortable it can be and i'd like to start by just reinforcing what you said that setting boundaries help children feel safe and when i think about it you know there is a um what is unique about parent-child relationship is that there is a power imbalance we as parents hold more power and of course you know we want to use it responsibly and i think the metaphor that comes to mind is if I'm sitting in the aeroplane and, you know, you get those announcements at the beginning, you know, this is the weather, this is how long we'll fly, you know, we wish you a pleasant flight, blah, blah, blah. I, I'm not entire. I don't know how we'll get there, what will happen, but I trust the pilot to get us safely from A to B. And so that's, I think that's the feeling that children get when we set boundaries in in a kind, clear way. You know, I wouldn't go and sort of start negotiating with a pilot as to, you know, which route to take or, you know, how fly he needs to or she needs to go. But when we're wobbly in our boundaries, you know, if the pilot was wobbly and I would be sitting in that seat, I would not feel safe. Mm -hmm. And and so, so that's why... I'm really glad that we're having that uh, conversation today because when we are firm, steady, confident in in our boundary settings, we can create that sense of safety for our children. You know, I think often probably at times when they need the most. Mm. And so in, in terms of now moving on to how we set those boundaries, and I would like to start not with those immediate immediate examples that you shared, but sort of take a step back because I work both with separated parents and with couples. And across the board, setting boundaries is a tricky issue. And I think partly it's because a lot of us, we start on the back foot when it comes to setting boundaries because we have not been at the receiving end of those clear and kind boundaries and um, a lot of our experiences we were either setting boundaries in kind of mean harsh way when our boundaries were violated or were not heard 
uh, and we just kind of really created that um, rupture and disconnection in relationship with our parents. All parents were not set were not setting boundaries, and they were kind of they were absent, not showing up, and we're left just on our own, needing to figure things for ourselves. Um, yeah, how, how can you resonate with that? How does that sound? Definitely, I think that we don't know about boundaries until we feel overwhelmed, and then we suddenly look and go, oh my God, how did all of this happen? And then we start that journey looking at, well, how did I allow that to happen? How did that get in to my, mm. to my reality? Um, but yeah, the initial, we, it's not like we in a class in school go, and here's how we set boundaries. You know, we just, we don't know it until it's too late oftentimes. Mm, 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 exactly. So, and just to come back to that point, if, you know, you, um, you know, person who's watching this video can resonate with what I'm saying, I think it's such a great idea to get help to really explore the boundary blueprint that you have. Because even though, yes, this situation is very different, but these are the pieces that you're working with. And when it comes to relationships and setting boundaries, we just don't know what we don't know. We learn about how relationships work, not as you say, by reading books, but by being in the relationships and by our experiences, from our experiences. And we just take it for granted. You know, if you think about it, since birth, up until, I don't know, some point we go to school, we live in our bodies being pulled down by the force of gravity. Like all our muscles are just to that. We don't question it. We just know that this is how I move on this planet. And then one day we hear that there are other environments where there is no gravity and you move totally different. And then poof, your mind explodes and you can talk. Anyway, I won't go there, but <clears throat> that's, um, you know, that's what I'm trying to say. It's getting help can be so helpful to really notice, um, to, to have that mirror and explore how, how do you do boundaries, what feels good, what doesn't feel good. And um, so, and I know, Sarah, on your website, you have brain spotting sessions and other therapists, and that's just such a helpful resource for anyone who wants to get more comfortable in communicating their boundaries with their children and in their other relationships. Would like to add anything to that? I think that when we're overwhelmed with our boundaries that it can be hard to process anything at all, let alone, um, we can go one of two ways. We can either put our walls up so high that we don't let anyone or anything think, I'm never going to get hurt again. I'm not accepting anything. And, you know, in our parent-child relationship, this can lead to those harsh boundaries that you talked about. Or we go the opposite way, which is opening up completely and being completely passive. And for our children, that can be that very bumpy ride on the plane of not feeling safe at all. So you need to know where where you're at. Are you, are you um, able to... Or, like say what's that blueprint what have you learned do you understand what boundaries are what are your own personal boundaries what would make you feel safe and really start off at, with those basic levels and so yes brain spotting can help you to start that processing um and really sort of bring your brain into that place where it needs to have these conversations that you've never had before um mm. so yeah it, it's so important to get that support before you approach this because this you know, boundaries are essential for all areas of our life, work, relationships, and ourselves. And mm. so getting it right now will change the entire course of your life. So worth doing it right, worth doing it, mm. worth really going back in and looking at it. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'd say that is the foundation. And then just a few tips for those situations that we started with this conversation, video games and bedtimes and back talking. So first of all, I would say, choose your battles carefully. Like really, you know, start small, start with something manageable and just 
choose with something that you know in your heart that is good, that is right for each other. It's really, really important to stick with and see through. And so once you decided on the boundary um, that you would like to set, um, the next thing in um, communicating it, it's often helpful to separate kind of the boundary itself and the feelings around that boundary. And I think, you know, as you say, that's where things can, can get tricky because say, you know, if, if your child can play a certain video game at the other parent's house and you don't allow them to play it in your house, um, you know, understandably, you can get a strong reaction. <laughs> anger, frustration, withdrawal, you know, the list goes on and on and on. And so when those um, reactions get played out, that's, you know, that's where the rubber really hits the road. Just to stay, to stay present, you, the key is, uh, and it's much easier to do if you've done your homework before, the key is to just stay present, stay listening, welcoming all the feelings, letting them to talk or letting them withdraw if that's how children process their feelings, being there, available for them when they come back, when they're ready to talk and um, just staying present and available. And even though it can look messy, just treating that as an opportunity to connect and strengthen your relationship. And, you know, so those other extremes that we're talking about would be to react back with anger and maybe like draw other boundaries that you were not planning initially to do or withdraw and say, okay, fine, you can play that game to just stop that, um, um, get away from that discomfort of those intense emotions. How does that sound, Sarah? so important i think that's where people really struggle is when other people whether that be their ex-partner or their children in this case are uncomfortable with the boundary sometimes that natural reaction is like say either well then we'll put this in place and we'll put this in place and you become the, that harsh um sort of almost like you're building a castle of right well then you're not doing this you're not doing that it, it, it can become a very um very harsh environment then for the child mm -hmm. or the opposite which is just for the peace for yourself uh, is to go okay fine but it's about what what is message is that telling the child um and again bring back to that plane it's saying this isn't safe for me mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I don't know where I stand woman is this woman is that um and so yeah I think it, it's they're really it's really important to separate those two things out and recognize I'm setting this for a good reason and I believe in the reason and I can stand firm with that but I'm going to get a backlash and you know I've got to be confident in dealing with that um, and showing my child that I'm there for them and I can meet them because that shows them that a boundary is not a pushing away it's actually a pulling closer it's an opportunity to come in rather than go out which is counterintuitive I think for a lot of people yeah yeah I agree with you because boundaries can feel like such a sort of boundary and disconnecting mm. experience and it can be a, a connecting experience one set right and I agree with what you're saying you know understanding it you know, it can be tricky to kind of figure, like connect those dots, but then to actually move it into practice is like a whole new ball game, especially for someone who hasn't been at the receiving mm. end of those kind and firm boundaries. It can feel like learning to talk a new language. And um, so that's why we warmly invite anyone watching to join the circle of security parenting course where we'll go much deeper in this and you will get an ongoing support from us and other parents in the group as you practice experiment this way of setting boundaries and other ways of connecting with your children and kind of just 
taking it step by step until it just feels natural and new normal way of connecting with children. Brilliant advice as ever on such an important subject and I'll be honest I could sit here for much longer and talk about it but as you say the circle of security parenting course is where we have those conversations and if it is something that's resonated with you please do check out um, what, we're, what we're offering and we look forward to seeing you on our next video where we will be sharing more audience questions and solutions for you so thank you Una and thank you for watching